Hi, Chris with Allen Fitness here, and welcome to Foam Roll 101. So, I'm sure many of you are familiar with this wonderful device. It is a very basic foam roll that I got off Amazon. Uh, they are very affordable. I think I got this one for maybe $12 or $15 at the most. And I think this is one of the best pieces of fitness equipment you can get, especially considering how cheap it is. Because this is going to help in aid in your recovery. This is going to help you feel a whole lot better. And today I'm going to explain exactly why. So first, a couple things is that if you don't have one of these, I certainly recommend it. I also recommend getting a longer one. This is about three feet long. And the reason is when you get a longer one, this is going to allow you to do a few specific stretches and holds that you may not otherwise be able to do with a shorter one. Now, you don't necessarily need to get one of the types of foam roll that have the nubs and stuff for extra trigger point release. Um, honestly, one of these should, just do, should do you just fine. Real affordable, excellent investment to, to, to make. So, the most common question I get by far when it comes to foam rolling is, should I do my foam rolling before a workout or should I do my foam rolling after a workout? And my answer to this is going to be definitely yes. Now what I mean by this is you're going to really want to do both. However, the method and goal before versus after is going to change because what you're trying to do when you foam roll before a workout is trying to accomplish something different than when you're foam rolling after a workout and to get the most out of this there are going to be different methods so let me explain i'm going to explain some of the benefits of foam rolling both before and after workout and kind of the differences of why they go hand in hand so before a workout what you're really trying to do is just prepare yourself right you're not really working on your flexibility yet you're uh, not really trying to make any big changes with the tissue so what is it exactly we're doing I'm gonna break this down a little bit just to make it make sense and let me know if the comments if, in the comments if you have any questions on this you know and we can definitely talk about it so first the method you're going to use when foam rolling before a workout is going to be a little bit different in that you're going to actually be moving and massaging the muscle. Now this is what I see most people doing with foam rolls most of the time anyway. But let me explain why it's good and why you want to do it before a workout as opposed to after. So when you're rolling like so, you know, when you're, you know, massaging, moving back and forth, before a workout, you're going to be using your that that type of roll, and you know maybe giving giving your muscles a short 30 second hold if you find a knot. And the reason for this is because what we're doing is we're increasing the blood flow to the muscles. Everybody knows a nice massage is gonna you know get the blood flow go going and kind of make the muscles more pliable so that it's a, you know they're a little bit more ready for the workout to come. You're not really increasing your flexibility here. You're just getting the muscles prepared. So increasing the blood flow to the muscles that you're massaging, you know, you're massaging that soft tissue to make it more pliable. <laughs> I, I often like to make the comparison to uh, when, when you wake up in the morning, if you're over 30, it's like you're a stretch Armstrong that's been put in the freezer overnight. You got to let it warm up because if you just try and stretch it, it's just going to snap and, it, and it's not, and it's no fun if you've ever tried to get too intense before a proper warm-up when you're a little older you know what I mean so you're massaging the soft tissue and getting it ready <coughs> but the biggest thing we're doing here is actually we're preparing the nervous system for the workout to come because what is it that actually happens when we don't warm up well and we push the muscle further than it's ready to go a lot of the times believe it or not it's not actually your flexibility that is getting in the way before you're warmed up it's the nervous system saying hey we're not prepared to go past this range of motion so you know you stretch too far 
the nervous system isn't ready, so it sends the signal, grab on, tighten up, and then the signal is too strong, or the muscle, or it's overcompensating, and boom, that's how tightness and muscle spasms can happen when you put too much intensity before warming up properly. Now, this is obviously a bigger concern for people when they get older, and when I say older, I mean anybody over the age of 30, something hurts, something's tight, make sure you warm up properly, and this is one of the methods to help you do that. So, preparing the nervous system, once you got the signals going, your muscles are going to be a little bit more ready, your nerves, nervous system isn't going to be grabbing on so tightly, so you're going to go ahead and pair this, the foam rolling, along with some active stretching or dynamic movement to get your warm up properly, and this way you're going to get really prepared for the workout to come, and this is going to really, really lower your chances of injury, and it'll let you get more, the most out of the workout as you can. So. Now, that's how and why you want to foam roll before a workout. The difference here from, what, from that and after the workout is mostly the goal. What exactly is it that we're doing after the workout? Because we don't need to warm up. We, we're already warm because we just finished our workout, of course. So what, we're, what are we trying to do? The biggest thing we're trying to do when we stretch and foam roll after a workout is facilitating the recovery. This is going to help your, your muscle growth come faster and more efficient. It's going to reduce your soreness. Um, it's going to help cycle all that lactic acid out of your muscles and make you feel a whole lot better. Especially if you're older and you want to train more frequently, things like this are, are very, very neglected. Most people love their intense workouts, but don't take the actual time to focus on the recovery and then they end up being sore and injuring themselves and they think oh there's nothing I could have done there is it just takes a little bit more time and dedication so the reason you want to do your your foam rolling and the method by which you want to do it after a workout is you're gonna be going for more actual myofascial release now like I said like I've said to some people before Myofascial release is different than muscle release in that it takes a little bit longer for the signal to happen. Um, a lot of certifications and whatnot will tell people 30 seconds hold for a myofascial release and that's how you do it. Where that's maybe not necessarily that true. Usually with myofascial release. Now fascia, if you're not really familiar, is the uh, strong tissue that covers your muscles. Uh, just for a little perspective here, if you ever look at a steak and you see the, the tough white film around the outside of it, that's fascia. And all of our muscles are encased in this fascia. So when the fascia tightens up or bunches up, it will form a knot. So it's not actually the muscle necessarily. It could be, but not necessarily. It's the fascia bunching up and when it does that you can imagine all the muscle under it, under it gets pressured and it hurts and that is how knots happen and when knots happen how to release it uh, you've probably heard that you apply pressure and it'll release the knot so that is very true but a couple of common mistakes here are that uh, number one people tend to put way too much pressure on a trigger point you really don't need all that much. You're really just putting enough pressure to send the signal back and forth. And though it may feel good to put a whole lot of pressure, if you put too much, it could actually damage the tissue or slow down the signal or j otherwise just inhibit what you're trying to do. So remember, as with many things in fitness, less is more. Don't put too much pressure on those knots when you're trying to get myofascial release. So. Once again, after your workout, you're going for the myofascial release and you're doing that longer hold, generally 90 seconds to three minutes or maybe even upwards of up to, up to five minutes depending on what you're doing. Now, one of the biggest reasons I've said to get a longer one is because there are some things you can do um, with this laying on it to where 
mild fast release is not necessarily always just pressure applied to a knot. It can also be a long stretch that's held over time. And the longer foam roll will allow you to do some of these stretches. So mild fast release, longer, you want a longer hold, 90 seconds to three minutes, maybe even five, depending on how you're feeling. So this is gonna release your trigger points. And that's what trigger points usually are, is actually fascia, not muscle. So if you're having trouble getting rid of a knot, try just holding it for longer. Set a timer if you have to. So what is this gonna accomplish? Once again, this is gonna minimize your cramping after a workout. This is gonna help prevent muscle spasms. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of the time I see if a person starts getting a tight muscle or something during a workout, or even if a muscle spasm starts happening, they might stop and stretch and kind of just pull and pull, whereas that can actually exacerbate the issue if you are indeed having a muscle spasm because it's just going to infuriate the nerves around it and make it worse. So one thing you can do is myofascial release with foam roll to help minimize or prevent muscle spasms by inhibiting the signal with that pressure. So say you start getting a little muscle spasm in your lower back during a workout, instead of stopping and doing a whole bunch of hard stretching, just put some pressure on the place it's spasming. And even if it may not cure the spasm right away, there's a good chance it will minimize how much it hurts or how long it takes to heal. So remember, foam rolling and pressure is preferable with muscle tightness, initial muscle tightness over hard, hard stretching because you don't want to damage your tissue or make the nerves freak out on you, which will make a muscle spasm much, much worse. So that's basically all we have as far as the basics of why you want to foam roll and how to go about it both before and after a workout. 